Well, Nakin to conclude the talk in Armagen Hakas, to Firkin Fulcher Rovilig. May I say what a, a wonderful gathering this is, and uh, the building will reverberate for a long time with all of the life that is in this room, and you're all most welcome. And it, um, what is something very, very important, and I'm so pleased that what you're doing, not just for yourselves, but it's exemplary. And on that note, I'm going to hand you over uh, to Sabina, who, in fact, as you all know very, very, very well, we regard as this as one of our most important Orison initiatives. So, Sabina, over to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. You're so welcome. It looks wonderful. You really... This year, huge. Hello. I met a four-day-old baby. Wow. It's the latest on our way in. I couldn't believe it's for this tiny little. So it's of all, all ages, I believe, here. And I think a lot are around three months. What is it? Seven months. Seven months, yeah. So, um, Alfred, it's wonderful that you're all here. It really is to have that, um, you know, it's so, so important, the breastfeeding, and it's, you're so wonderful, and your lovely baby, ah, hello, hiya, <laughs> your lovely babies, and anybody who needs to get up and go out or breastfeed their baby while they're here, the space is here at this year house, so do whatever you need to be happy and comfortable and for your, your baby to be happy, so feel free to get up and walk out or walk back again whatever is needed for, for your happiness, yeah. And so, um, I'm sorry the last two years that the, the mothers that missed out then, yeah. but um, hopefully that'll be the end of the COVID so it won't happen again, yeah. And we have all these wonderful mothers breastfeeding successfully, if you're at, you know a lot, I know we're at three months and seven months and more, so you've been very successful. And we have a lot of great speakers that I want to welcome as well, from all the wonderful organisations that are advocating and assisting to get breastfeeding more established in, in Ireland. So, um, mind you, it's disappointing that despite all these great efforts by everybody, by, by Quidju, Lelish Lee, Friends of Breastfeeding, everyone, that our numbers in Ireland are still so small. We've the lowest in Europe and the lowest globally. I mean, that is so, in England, it's 81%. And in uh, Scandinavian countries, 90%. And I, I'm embarrassed to say what it is here, but other, some of our speakers will, will say later on. So it means that something huge really needs to be done because we all know from the scientific research done by the World Health Organization of the United Nations that the very best start that a baby can have in life is to be breastfed exclusively for six months. And then when, while weaning, start weaning and adding solids at six months to continue for breastfeeding for the year, you know, partial breastfeeding, and then for as long as a mother chooses. But that is the essential thing of the six months exclusive. And that's the big task. That's where the failure happens, that so many people can start and then they have not the help to continue on. So um, now, it's um, we we, are, we know for keeping on that, that that apart from passing on the mother's immunities and being the best for health, nutrition, and development, it has many other important benefits like lessening the possibility of um, of breast cancer and also by preventing uh, childhood obesity, which is a big problem. Yeah, but why? In Ireland, are we not reaching for our 90%? Why isn't it happening? What are we to do? What can we do? And we need to have more and more people and more and more things happen for that to, to really happen. And we'll all resolve 
because it has been great how the mothers who have breastfed their children are reaching out. And that was one of the big things that started, like Quid you and Bryn, of helping other mothers and having groups and having things. So we, we need really a lot to be done. In my mother's time, if we can say, and in your grandmother's time, my mother's, your grandmother's time, every child was breastfed. That was their natural right and that they were breastfed. They were breastfed for about a year. And that's why you'll notice in your ancestors, there was two years apart in the, in the children, their ages. Yeah. But somewhere around the late 40s or 50s, um, uh, there was change. And the cow and gate, the formula, came on the world. And it began to be, began to be pushed. So that by the time that I was having my children around the late 70s, there was no mention of breastfeeding. It was all bottle fed and nobody on your journey, either the doctor, the obstetrician, GP or the nurses in the hospital. No mention of breastfeeding. No, and there was just a few uh, women who got help from La Lesh League or they knew from books that they, with no encouragement, now, lack of encouragement, but they kept going and started. And thank God it has moved on a lot. So now I think lots of women would, would love to breastfeed and are succeeding, but they're, the, um, they're not getting the, the help. They're not in the culture that's helping them. Um, there's, um, they need the support, and that's what has to be, has to be got. Now, the, there's the training of the well care, well, the, in the health care. I mean, thank God they started having midwives been trained again and all for the last number of years and that. But the, and the HSC, their health care uh, uh, service breastfeeding plan 2016 and 2021 is a start. And of course, if it were fully implemented and had the funding for that, it would be very good. But what I feel and what I gather in general and what we know from the wonderful research that Banya Baha did is that the, the greatest benefit could be achieved and probably can only be achieved by recognizing and prioritizing the necessity of the presence of the midwife. I think there should be as many midwives as are required to give continuity of care to the expecting mother right through the pregnancy on the preparation for childbirth, on the preparation for breastfeeding, for preparing the nipples so that the appropriate creams and proprietary things that are there now, in my time we used methylated spirits, but now you have proprietary <laughs> brands that will, you know, toughen the nipples so that they won't be sore and the baby will have no problem, they'll have no problem when the baby starts to latch on. And they, they should uh, uh, prepare the mothers as well for what to expect on the journey, or otherwise they give up at different stages. You know, when the baby at three weeks, six months, six weeks, six, ten weeks, etc., has this huge growth spurt, and it wants to feed all day, and you're washed out, it is only doing it for to increase the supply, it's nature's way, but many people at that stage feel and are being persuaded, oh, you haven't enough milk. But it's a matter of just letting them feed and feed and feed. And next thing is, they, they, there's enough milk in and they're back happy again. Um, now, every midwife should be trained. They should, every tra tra midwife should be a trained lactation expert that can help with the latching on and establishing the breastfeeding uh, during mothers having and having a longer stay in hospital. We really shouldn't be people being thrown out, you know. I, even I think in my time, you had a number of days in the hospital. So there really needs to be long enough of, of a stay because wh wh what are they going out to be on their own? They need to have a longer stay and the, uh, the midwife should be available all that time there to help with the latching on, and they should be available to the mother when she goes home for as long as necessary for the breastfeeding to be successfully established. And that may vary a bit from mother to mother, but that, that is what we need. And 
It, we've got to get it. We've got to get that. You hear? What do you think? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And I always think that all the medical personnel, the GPs, the obstetricians, the nurses, all of these people who meet, medical people who meet the mother during her pregnancy, they should have knowledge of breastfeeding as part of their training and, and have it as undergraduate and postgraduate so that from the beginning their mother's been pointed to where she will get the help and that it is the natural expected thing. Now, it would help with being country being com culturally familiar. It's that we're embarrassed and all kinds of silly things, which we shouldn't be at this day and age, of not having the culture around us that is encouraging and welcoming breastfeeding. And I think if we had, we'd say, in the ed more in the education system, and certainly at second level, so that they're familiar and welcoming and know all ab about breastfeeding. And of course, the um, the spaces, the public spaces, you know, restaurants, every place, they should welcome uh, women breastfeeding and women should feel free wherever they are, in the open or any place, any place they are in public and have to be to carry on their lives. They should be free and welcomed and we've got to move towards having that kind of a culture like they have in other countries. Yeah. So, um, um, now, um, uh, I think myself, watching, as you all are, the programmes on the television where we have constantly the formula-fed, bottle-fed babies being shown. And I think it would be a highly desirable move by the HSE to have programmes and regular ads on television showing breastfeeding mothers and about breastfeeding mothers rather than the daily ads we see for formula feed by largely unaccountable corporations with vast resources of finance who are pushing it everywhere in the world. Because this, it's not just an individual thing, the breastfeeding. It is nat national, international, and international, and global. And it really is what has to be aimed at when we see all of the things uh, around the world. It, we need to have it where every baby is breastfed by a well-nourished mother. And there's huge work being done by formula-pushing ones of pushing the formula and places where the water is not clear enough and where people are on the move and everything. So globally, these big corporations, they really have to be faced up. And we have our own um, breastfeeding law group here that are doing their part in it. So, and they're, they're, these corporations, they're unable to deny because of the WHO, there's the science and research, research that shows that baby breastfed on human milk is best. I was loved at a seminar in Galway in the last year, we had it virtually, and all of the speakers referred to the human milk. <laughs> I thought it was wonderful, lovely, you know. <laughs> Because uh, I remember saying, as it, you know, there's a poem we did in school that said, um, to, to throw away something, this pearl, as if it were a careless trifle, something that was there, so we'll, we'll bring back that treasure. Uh, uh, and to, to seek to, they seek to confuse with ads that speak of the follow-on formula. They can't deny it, but they do their thing. So I hope that we would recognise that maybe to get a plan together that all of these groups and the speakers will be speaking to you now, if we could kind of get representatives from them and to go as a group to the government and then to the different um, departments that deal with us. Yeah. That I think that that would be really worthwhile and I think we would get... So I, I will now call on the lovely, wonderful speakers from the different organisations to come and speak to you.